Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the time may be. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you're new around here. My name is James, aka Widowed, and this is your aggressively mediocre player's guide to the perilous moons. Now, one thing that's worth noting, if you are doing this as part of the quest, the last part of the Moons of Peril quest itself requires you to basically do a full run of the dungeon. The bosses in those fights, exactly the same as the bosses in the dungeon every time after. So regardless whether you're doing this for the first time as part of the quest, or you've done the quest and you're getting into it, trying to learn it properly. Either way, this guy's going to give you everything that you need to know. From the perspective of someone who's kind of average, I'm not that great at the game, you know, I'm going to give you the breakdown anyway. In terms of stats, I have quite high melee stats, not as high as many people will have, but probably higher than people watching this video might have, so I would recommend base 70s as probably around the starting area, but it's hard to say when I haven't done it at a lower level. It's still relatively new content, and I don't have many accounts, so this is really what I used to do most of my testing. In terms of, like, gear, though, you, the, the higher the defense level, the better. Uh, you're definitely going to want at least some Barrow's gear going into this. You're going to need the highest defense bonus possible. The reason being that each of the bosses has a mechanic. They hit three times in a row. They have like three hit splats each, all of them, and if the first one misses, then the next two automatically miss. If the second one misses, the last one automatically misses. So having a higher defense is better because the earlier that you cause them to miss, the more misses come after that. I don't know if I explained that well or not, but higher defense equals better. So you're definitely going to want some Barrow's gear at a minimum to start thinking about this. Uh, I have Darox plate body, Torax plate legs, and a Torax helm, along with the Barrow's gloves. Go Dragon Boots, you're fine if you don't have them, if you're on like Rune or Climbing Boots or whatever, it's not that important of a slot. Uh, Fury for me, you can bring Torture if you have it, but yeah, Fury, Glory's probably fine too, but again, the extra defense bonuses on the Fury don't go miss, and Fire Cape if you have it, if not, I guess... Obsidian cape would probably be the better option. But there's also a mixed hide cape, which now gives a strength bonus to people who don't have fire cape yet, so that might be an option. Generally, whatever your highest level defense is, that's what you're going to want to go for. Personally, I take a dragon defender rather than something like a dragon fire shield. You could take more defense in this slot if you wanted, but I like the extra attack bonus that it gives me when I am using my whip. And the dragon dagger. I don't eat that much in here personally. Just depends how much damage you take and whether you want to take a defender or a shield. Now, the weapons are a bit more complicated. Each of the bosses is weak to a different style. We've got Stab, Slash and Crush, one of each. Now you don't have to bring all three styles. If you just bring a whip, you're gonna be fine. If you just bring a zombie axe, you're gonna be fine. You could probably even try it with a D-Sim. I haven't myself, but when I first started doing this, I was just doing it with a zombie axe and it was fine on all three of the bosses. But if you have available options, you're going to want to bring a decent, like your best slash, your best stab and your best crush. For me, I don't even have a stab. <laughs> like the, my best stab weapon is a dragon halberd, which has a terrible speed. It's so slow. However, I do actually bring this with us for a little tech. So it's kind of like my little secret tech, this. I don't think anyone else does it, but... Probably because it's not that good, but I'll, I'll show you it anyway. Anyway, stab, crush, slash. If you have good weapons, bring them. Otherwise, just use whatever your best melee weapon is. It's really not that deep. I've probably rambled enough, so why don't we get on in there? I'm going to put that axe away because I don't actually need it. Um, yeah, all you need with your no supplies, we've got our spec weapon, a crush weapon here, and it, it's actually going to be my stab as well. I'm going to use it for both. This is for a specific phase which we will get to all right so i'm assuming you've already explored the dungeon as part of the earlier parts of the quest but they don't necessarily teach you how to make the potions and food that you are going to want to use to sustain your runs here just realized the music wasn't playing 
So, getting used to your campsite is probably one thing that needs to be, like, gone over a little. The first thing here, you can make a cup of tea on the stove that fully replenishes your runner energy. Pretty much do that, like, whenever you're passing a campfire. There's no reason not to. Here you see, I collected some grubs from this bush. I got four of them, which is great. I personally like to make four potions. You can only get two vials of water at a time, though. So we're going to have to crush these down and then mix them up before we can get some more herb law supplies from the crate. Mix the other two up. I got three four doses and one three dose. The higher your herb law level, the more you get out of them generally. And then there's two other types of food. I'm going to show you both before we even go into the first fight. The first over here... If you get the hunting supplies, you also get given a butterfly net. You don't really need this, but if you do use it, you can catch these moonlight moths to restore a bit of prayer to you and nearby allies between runs. But yeah, for the most part, you don't use the butterfly net. Now, the first food method is a hunter-based method, and to do this, you need the rope. That's why it gives you it. You're going to set the traps up on these three rocks here. And once you've done that, you rustle the bush, lizards come out, you collect the meat and you cook it. Lizard meat cooks down, and what I mean by that is each piece, each raw lizard gives you like two or three meat. It multiplies, look at that. Better cooking level makes it multiply more or less. But yeah, that is that method. You could just keep going, collect a few lizards. I usually get about six, and then from there, I've got a full invent of food. Now, personally, I eat the lizards over the fish because my hunt level is higher than my fishing level, so they heal more HP for me. But if the reverse is true, then you'll probably want to go for the fish rather than the hunter, uh, and you'll get a little bit more HP out of them because that's what it's based on. All right, so if you want the fish, it's in the other room. You can only get fish in this room. You can only get lizards in the other room. There are two spots we've got here and the one down here, but I'm just going to go use this one for now. Fishing in it relatively simple. You can just stay still and you will catch fish. Or you can align your net to the stream where the fish are going and supposedly catch them faster, but it doesn't seem to work half the time. It's not a very good system. Most of the time I just leave it sat there because I'm lazy. But yeah, the fish don't cook down, but they do cook quick. Like, you cook more than one at a time. And that's basically it. You've got your two different sources of food, with healing dependent on hunter and fishing levels. You've got your moonlight potions. These give you a super attack, super strength, and a divine super defense, as well as restoring prayer. So, they're just going to be uh, click this button whenever your prayer gets down. In terms of prayer... We're not going to need Protect from Melee. You might see people using it. They're wrong. You don't need it. It doesn't do anything. Protect from Melee does nothing here. All you're going to need is Piety, or if you don't have Piety, Steel Skin, Ultimate Strength, and Incredible Reflexes, you can just shove on to your Quick Prayers. For me, it's just Piety. Uh, yeah, that's going to be on whenever we're actively fighting the bosses. All right, it is time to go into the first one. This is the Eclipse Moon. It's usually the one that I do first. It is the boss that you want to do with stab. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm set to stab on my dual max. I am. Then we will go ahead and equip our spec weapon to start off with. Get the spec ready. Drink a moonlight potion and head on in. During the main phase, you are going to want to stay on the circle. It moves around. Phew, excuse me. Phew, bad time to have a sneeze in for- Whoa. It moves around in a clockwise motion in the same pattern each time. Uh, I'm actually just going to chuck my- Phew, god, bad time to have a sneeze in for- Low detail off so you can see where these are, because that's what it'll look like to you. Okay, I didn't get to explain anything there because my sneeze in fit. Apologies. During the main phase, it moves around in a circular rotation. You just want to stay in the light to take less damage and have more chance of hitting. Each of the bosses also has two spec phases. You saw the first one of the eclipses, then it can happen in either order. It just alternates all the time. These bosses are always alive. So you have your individual contribution bar that you're trying to bring down. But 
it's completely independent to anyone else's. The boss never actually dies. The fight is always going on, so it just alternates between the two. Okay, this is where my tech comes in. Uh, if I can actually respond. We use the Dragon Halberd here because there is no attack speed during this phase. You attack as fast as the things appear. And we're just trying to point ourselves at them until we hear their attacks come through. And you actually get damage off in that phase. I'm definitely going to have to explain the Eclipse boss again because I've, I've done terrible at this. That sneezing fit fucking threw me off. But that's basically the gist of it. You go around in the circle uh, and keep hitting the boss. It's going to do its spec and it alternates between the two. One of them you have to follow the moon shield around. The other one, yeah, just point yourself at the shadows as they appear. I'm just going to turn my volumes up a little bit. Alright, on to the next one. It's going to be the Frost Moon. We want to be on Crush for this one. I'm going to put myself on Crush on the Jewel Max. They do especially nicely in this room. Uh, there is a spec going on at the minute, so I'll just wait for it to finish before heading in. And then we'll start ourselves off with a couple of little DDS specs. So Blue Moon, just the same as the Eclipse and the Blood, you go around in the circle, that part is the same for all three of them. But absolutely demolishing her. She got fucked up there. Which worries me, because I might not get to show the other spec now. But that's okay, I was going to do two runs anyway. Alright, so during this spec, you want to try and avoid the tornadoes and light both of the braziers to deal damage to the blood blue moon. Uh, and she heals continuously during this phase. If you do get hit with a tornado, it turns your run off. So be cognizant of that. Uh, nothing too complicated there, though. Just going to light the braziers and get back to this spot. It's always going to be on this one after the braziers, this one after the other spec that she does. Okay, I'm not going to attack, because I wanted to get this, get to the next spec so I could demonstrate it. Alright, in this one, your weapon gets taken away. You punch the ice cube until you get the weapon back. Uh, you always deal the same amount to it, so there's no point using prayer. It doesn't matter what style you're on. You just dodge, get a couple kicks in. Don't get hit under the icicles. Simple enough, when you got your weapon back, you don't need to hit the ice cube anymore. You can just go chill, get towards this area, because it's going to respawn here. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned at all yet is that each of the three bosses has their own effect that they apply to you when they successfully hit you with an attack. So, for the blue moon, that is this cold starting to get in. It builds up, and eventually, it just cancels your attack completely saying that the cold is too much to bear, and then it completely disappears. Uh, when you light the braziers, it does clear your cold build up, though, so that is another reason to light them during that phase. The Eclipse boss reduces your max hit down by quite a lot. It makes you hit a lot of ones, basically, the more that it builds up on you. And the blood boss heals himself, which is probably the most annoying one if you're a lower level, because it's going to make the fight last a lot longer, especially if you're struggling to deal damage. Uh, for me, it's not too bad, because we deal a lot of damage. But yeah, this is the slash boss, so you're going to want uh, DDS. I'm just waiting for that spec to finish before I head on in there. And now we'll go on in and get onto the blood moon. We're going to use all our specs on him. He is the most annoying, and we want to get as much DPS as possible. Just falling into the same pattern. I'm about to go into a spec here. Alright, so after this spec, we're going to be getting ourselves to the... It basically, like, the spec is the full moon or the no moon. And then the next one after it is where the circle comes back. Uh, there, we're just dodging the pulls. It's very simple. Nothing complicated going on there. The other spec for the Blood Moon is the one that probably people struggle a lot more with. So I'm going to make sure I definitely get to show it by just not attacking here. 
Okay, so you get assigned your own little circle and your own little blood jaguar, which you go and hit in that circle. You don't want to step on the blood, but you also don't want to get hit by the blood jaguar. So you have to move on the perfect tick to not get hit as the pool disappears. Right there. See this pattern I'm making? It's just a rhythm game, this. And then when the circle disappears, you know, that's the last one. You can head back on over to the, the crescent moon over here. Finish off the boss. That is all three of them. Once you're done, you're going to want to head this way to loot the chest. I don't know if you're able to do it right away as part of the quest or if you have to go talk to someone first, but generally this is the way you go. And... Never lucky. Some generic resources there. We'll send those to the bank and I'm going to do another run because I'm not sure I 100% got to explain everything, especially with the Eclipse boss. Uh, so I may as well just go through the whole thing again. And I'm using the same supplies from a previous run. With a full invent of food and four potions, I can usually get about three or four runs uh, out of that much supplies. So you can go in in the middle of a spec. Like, I'll just go in here because this is a good spec anyway. We actually like this spec because it's one of the only ones you can deal damage during. So yeah, I'm just pointing myself. Once they take a swing at you is when it's safe to move. You don't want to move too early and... Oh, you'll take damage. So we're not on stab. Now we are. Yeah, the marks are not great here, I'm not going to lie, but I really don't have a good stab weapon. Could just use a whip. Right, I didn't really explain this one a great deal. It's kind of just, you have to stay behind it. If you don't, you take damage. If you do, the moon takes damage. So you want to generally click a little bit ahead of it to keep your character's true tile where its true tile is. So, it's generally a little bit safer to go ahead than it is behind, but not by too much. Can you get a little DDS in? Just keep moving around in the circle. Refreshing moonlight as you see fit. And then, yeah, the reason, the reason, the only reason I bring the Dragon Halberd here is because there's no attack speed, so... You get much higher hits in. That's just a personal tech. I haven't seen anyone else do it, but I like it. If you have a good stab weapon, you probably don't need to, like, you just use your same good stab weapon. <laughs> Alright, got much more time to explain the Eclipse that time, which is good. I think we mostly went through the Frost anyway, but I will, I will just carry on and do the full run just to give another example of what it might look like, and I'm not going to be waiting to demonstrate any mechanics this time. I'll just go for it at whatever speed I go for it. Generally, for me, the blue moon is the quickest one because the dual max go absolutely ham here. They just rip into her. I don't know why they're so good here specifically, but they are. So I probably won't get another spec. We did come in in the middle of it anyway, but... Whereas the Blood Moon is usually the longest for most people because of the healing the boss has. So you definitely want to save your specs for the Blood Moon, generally. It's just so satisfying bashing her head in with this. Joel Max, of course, one of the rewards from here, the Blood Moon weaponry. I do have the full Blood Moon set now, which is pretty cool. Other than that, I've just got the Eclipse, but what I really want is the Frost Moon set, but I haven't had a single piece so far. I generally tend to make sure that there isn't a Jaguar spec going on before heading in, just because it's the most annoying one. So, if you don't have to deal with it, then better skip it. It does damage you when you enter the phase as well, by the way, but the reason you want to attack the Blood Jaguars is because it heals you. So, it sort of makes up for the damage that you take at the start of the phase. We're doing a terrible job at this one. Oops. And the way the rewards chest works, the first part is the for each of the moons that you kill, you get a roll 1 in 56 of one of their pieces of armor. So, if you kill all three, it works out to like 1 in 19, roughly, for a piece. Uh, you can get multiple pieces from like different moons but not multiple pieces from the same moon in one chest uh, and there is a dupe protection system 
so that if you already have, for example, a weapon from a set, you won't get the weapon again until you've completed the full set at least. If you don't get a unique though, then you get a number of rolls on the regular loot table, which has a number of resources that are useful skilling supplies for an Iron Man, honestly. The water orbs are actually low-key really nice, because there's no real good way to get powered orbs on an Iron Man, and it just gives us a use for Zaf staff to get some uh, daily GP. But yeah, depending on how many bosses you kill, if you kill just one boss, you only get one roll on the standard loot table. If you kill two bosses, you get three rolls, and if you kill all three, you get six rolls. So, if you're potentially trying to target farm a specific piece of armor or weapon, you can just kill the bosses that you want stuff from. Personally, I'm probably never going to kill the Blood Moon again after I've d done recording this, which is now, because... I've got the set, I don't need it, so I don't care that much about the extra supply chest rolls going up from 3 to 6, it's quicker, it'll be quicker for me to just do the blue moon and the eclipse from now on. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the perilous moons, never lucky. If you have any further questions that I didn't cover here, anything that was unclear, please do leave them in the comments, I'll answer every single one, I'm here to help, that's why I'm making a guide video. So please don't hesitate to, to leave any questions you have. And if there's more guides that you want to see, like this one, for other content that you don't know, it may already be on my channel. If it's not, feel free to ask for it. If it's something I know how to do, I will gladly make a guide video on it. If it's something I don't know how to do, then I will do my best to learn it so that I can make a guide video on it. Hit the like button if the video helped you out, or if you just enjoyed it anyway, even if you're a master at this shit. Appreciate all the help I can get in growing the channel. It'd be lovely to get to 500 subs this year. That would be really cool. So help me do that by hitting the sub button as well as the like button. Just hit them both together. Till next time though, look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. See you on the next one.